Hello, everybody, and welcome to Old School, a podcast from the Old Davy School Historical Museum. I'm Kim, the Education Director here, and I'm excited to share some more stories from our archives. In 2017, we teamed up with a group of graduate students from the History Program at Florida Atlantic University to conduct oral history interviews with former teachers and students of the Davy School, longtime residents of the town, and more. It was a great experience for us to collect all of these memories and an opportunity for young historians to get out into the community. I'm so thankful to have these interviews to include in our museum collections and to share with you. So today we'll share some clips from the interview with Miss Polly Lenzen, a much loved teacher here at Davie Elementary from 1953 to 1987. She has some great stories, so let's get started. Polly Lenzen was born in Webster Groves, Missouri on May 27, 1924. Earning her teaching degree in St. Louis at Harris Teachers College, she taught in Missouri and Hawaii before she started teaching at Davy Elementary in 1953. She taught kindergarten and first grade at the old school here, and then even went on to the new Davy Elementary until her retirement in 1987. Here's a little clip about what it was like when she first arrived at the Davy School. You came to Florida. Um, what led you to Davy to become a teacher there? Well, uh, it was in the middle of the year. It was January, so um, <coughs> they needed teachers at that time. So I got my pick. I went to Dania first. Uh, Dania. Oh, then I went to Stranahan at that time. That was a elementary school. And then I went to Davy, and I liked that because it was out in the country and. Uh, low key and just seemed like it mm -hmm. would be easy. What um what grades or, or subjects did you teach over the time that you taught in Davy? I taught first grade first uh, they didn't have kindergartens at the time. So I taught first grade. And then when kindergartens came in oh maybe after two years and I wanted to teach kindergarten. I taught that for forever, then, for 35 years. So you enjoyed working with the young kids? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Five years. Oh, nice. Um, can you tell me what a typical day was like for you as a teacher in Davie, like back in the 50s? What was it like to start your day and, and come to school? Well, uh, now you lived in Fort Lauderdale, right? You did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So how did you get to Davie? Drove, drove out 84 to Davie Road. And then down D Davy Road. Davy Road was gravel at the time, and it always took me a <coughs> half an hour to get out to Davy because the traffic wasn't bad. So that I could just go straight out. And uh, then uh, when the interstate came in, went on that, and uh, same thing, half an hour because the traffic got bigger. And then um, Davy Road became became paved because it wasn't gravel anymore. And uh, I'd always meet in the teacher's lounge and we would chat and smoke. We smoked in those days in the school. And the parents would bring the children in and a couple of them were dropped off by horseback. And that was always kind of fun. So the parents would ride them on their horses uh -huh, and uh -huh. wow. <laughs> and it was very easy because those in those days, uh, I ruled, and so the children knew that if they got when we spanked too, that we, if we spanked them at the school, they'd be spanked at home too. And, of course, I would just give him a couple pats. Miss Lenzen is always a teacher I hear fun stories about. Taking picnic trips to the Malaluka trees that used to be behind the school, art projects, school plays, and more. Here she talks about a field trip she took her class on. So when you were teaching in Davy, did you have any, um, any adventures in Davy? Any memorable experiences? Or? Well, this one time we were up small field trip walking up to uh, the old Davy school, walking up to this uh, 
farm where there was an alligator in a cage. And we went up there to, to see that. And coming back, I counted the kids. Patrick was gone. So I had all the kids sit down. They were about 25. Sit down, don't move. And I had to go get after Patrick, who was about, oh, about a half a block back. So I went, and there he was, running around, thinking he was cute, and so I got him. But the thing was that I had to <coughs> leave all those kids by themselves, sitting down on the road, by uh, the side of the road, while I went to get Patrick. Patrick was a bad kid, but a kid that you loved, you know, naturally. And did they all stay put? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we were at the bowling alley one day. We were at the bowling alley one day at the, at the counter. These two kids were talking, and I overheard them say, this one kid said, you never say no to Miss Lindsay. <laughs> Here's But Davie was not without its challenges, and here Miss Lindsay remembers when the first black teacher began at Davie Elementary. Now the first uh, <clears throat> black teacher came to school, Daisy, and uh, I remember this one uh, teacher said, when the first black teacher comes in the front door, I'm going out the back. Well, it, that didn't happen. She stayed. But, um, Got, got one fine. I remember we used to always go out to uh, have breakfast, the teachers, when the, when the school started in the, in the fall, and uh, we'd go to Rolling Hills Country Club. And I called them and I said, now we have a black teacher on the faculty now. And they said, well then we will be able to have you because 
uh, black teachers aren't allowed, black people aren't allowed in the country club. I said, okay, then we're not going to come. So we went to the beach, and we had a cookout on the beach for breakfast. Nice. For Daisy. Miss Lenzen lived an amazing life full of adventure and stories. In 1963, she took a trip around the world. I went around the world in three ships. In those days, it wasn't a cruise. They weren't cruises. They were just transportation. Didn't fly. Drove to San Francisco. Friends drove me to San Francisco. And then I got on the a ship, went to uh, Hawaii. The number it cost $200. <laughs> First class, and uh, ended up on that ship in uh, New Zealand. Got on the Oriana piano ship and went to Australia, Ceylon, through the Suez Canal, to, uh, to the top of Africa. I forgot the name of the uh, town I got off of. But anyway, Got off there and then took a, a month's tour of the Middle East. Took a train down to Cairo, met my uh, tour group, 30 people, and then uh, went out to the uh, Sphinx and the pyramids, flew over to uh, uh, Lebanon, to Syria, the ba Damascus, Syria. And in those days, on every, in almost every corner that we went by, there were machine gun, machine gun amp, uh, men standing on every corner. Even in those days, of '63. Wow. And uh, it was kind of scary. And we went Greece. In, in Greece. The tour I was on, they dismantled, they flew back to the States. And I uh, stayed in uh, Athens a couple of days until my ship was ready to go back to uh, the States. And here's a story that shows her true grit. In 1987, while on her way to visit family in St. Louis, Miss Lindzen escaped a hostage situation in Georgia. A Sun Sentinel article about the incident says, an armed man entered the restaurant, and Lenzen recalled thinking he wanted to rob the customers, so she placed her wallet in her pocket and her purse behind the booth. He told everyone to get to the floor except Lenzen, who he told to put her head down. I knew he meant business, she said. The man then shoved the woman into the supply room and forced Lenzen to place her head into a pile of hot dog buns. I wasn't scared, I just said my prayers. It was like a melodrama going off in front of me, she said. Then she started talking. I played on his sympathy, Lenzen said. I told him to put his mother or sister in our place and to imagine how he would feel if it was them. Lenzen said she used psychology to persuade the man, who told her he feared being sent to the state's electric chair to remove a gun from her head. I asked him what kind of gun it was. I asked him what he was running from. I told him he had his whole life ahead of him. I just babbled and figured as long as I kept talking he wouldn't hurt me, she said. I don't know if I was brave or just in shock. I'm a school teacher, so I'm used to common sense, she said. Now I want to write a sympathy letter to his mother, she said. You have to feel sorry for a human being who is just running like that. I want her to know he at least let us go. After all of this, I'm just so happy I'm still alive. Lenzen said she didn't sleep too well that night, but wasn't going to allow a little excitement to ruin her trip. She continued on her trip to St. Louis, and then continued her travels. After returning to Fort Lauderdale, she went on to a trip to the Ozark Mountains, a gambling excursion in Las Vegas, and a short stay in North Carolina. What an amazing woman. It was She's non-stop. And with those instincts that, that just talk and relate, and she used that throughout her life. And oh, yeah. She retired from teaching in 1987, but never slowed down. Polly stayed busy with team bowling, poker groups, bridge, water aerobics, movies with friends, and golf. She loved cruising the Caribbean. And a St. Anthony Church parishioner, Polly was a woman of great faith and she volunteered at Holy Cross Hospital cheering up patients. She worked at animal shelters and she made a once a week trip to feed feral cats. I had the pleasure of meeting Miss Lenzen and getting a tour of the school with her as she told more stories about her time here, and I was able to tell her how many stories I've heard from former students who've had her through the years and always said she was their favorite teacher. 
Miss Lindzen passed away peacefully on April 3, 2019 at her home in Fort Lauderdale at the age of 95. I'm very thankful to have met her and now share her story here. If you have any stories to share about Ms. Lenzen or any other of your favorite teachers, please let me know. Email me at education at And until next time, take care of each other. <laughs>